Finally, after three long years since Metro 2033, after the bankruptcy of THQ, and after plenty of changes made to the game, including an entirely new name, Metro Last Light is finally released. I'm so excited to start talking about this game, I'm not even going to give a proper introduction. Let's just jump right into it. Metro Last Light is set in our beloved post-apocalyptic world of Moscow, at least a year or so after the events of Metro 2033. You're still Artyom, Khan is now a pirate, and the game begins by automatically assuming that you got the normal and or bad ending for Metro 2033. It's kind of fair to assume that since only 3.1% of players on PC got the good ending, and the devs announced that they'd be going with this ending a long time ago. I knew this was coming. But as someone who has experienced the good ending, what the fuck? The first five minutes of the game, the pirate and everyone else are either yelling at you for wiping out an entire race, or commending you for purging the earth of this scum. It's like the devs completely forgot about 2033. That entire game was based around the idea that you make choices and can go down one of two paths. It has a lot of interesting themes that tie into these decisions and the two endings themselves. The fact that there are choices that you make and that there are two endings is a pretty huge part of the story and experience itself. They're obviously going to have to choose one of the endings, and it's completely logical and okay with me that they chose this one, but why the hell do I get yelled at every 60 seconds for my theoretical decision? Mentioning it once in conversation is fine, giving backstory for those who don't know what happened in the previous game, but directly making me out to be the villain for the first half hour of the game is going 20 steps too far. And why is Khan suddenly a pirate? He's so different from the first game. Last game, he was introduced absolutely perfectly in a way that makes you really like him. He's knowledgeable, informative, and pretty damn good at combat, too. He simply showed up, almost as if he was just a little background character, who doesn't stick around for long, but his words and advice linger for the rest of the game. He's one of the few people who believe the Dark Ones have a right to live, but he never blatantly states that. He simply hints at the thought that nothing in the world is truly evil, and that it's just nature and not man's place to judge. Last Light throws all that out the window. Here, he's introduced to us immediately with painfully obvious graphical changes to try and make him look cool. Says, why the fuck did you do what you did? Which again, might not even be what we did. Storms around the base, yelling about saving the Dark Ones, and then is restrained, dismissed as a madman. 4A, you had a really awesome character. You clearly realized he was awesome and tried to make him more awesome, but really messed it up. And speaking of ruining stuff, what the hell happened to the voice acting? 2033's voice acting was far from perfect, but it was really good at parts and really set you up well for the characters you'll be interacting with and the world you'll be exploring. This game really seems to skimp on the voice acting with awkward pauses, maybe due to translation issues, and iffy over-the-top actors. Some of it is good, and I'll admit, if I wasn't so attached to the 2033 voices, I may be a little bit nicer here, but some of the voices just take you out of the experience. If you combine the iffy voices with the stupidity of some characters... Let's see, let's see. See? A great. Mm. Ah, yeah, Tough luck. Didn't even budge, huh? All right. We can't go through here. That we know. You end up with a really frustratingly odd situation in Last Light. I will admit that it does get much better as you get into the game, but it feels like you're on rails for the first couple hours. Scripted scenes are everywhere, and the game's filled with all sorts of areas that you can't bypass until whatever character says or does whatever they need to do. This wouldn't be so bad if it was done properly like in 2033, but in Last Light it just doesn't connect the way it did before, and makes you feel flat out slow for the first couple hours. I think part of that has to do with the fact that everything seemed too abrupt early on. In 2033, you're introduced to the world very slowly, beginning by just shooting five or six Nosaluses, strolling around your metro station, and guarding a simple delivery from one station to the next. The fact that Last Light throws you into the story so quickly makes you feel impatient to move on. If you're already hunting a Dark One with the supposed best sniper in all the Rangers within the first five minutes, you can't slow the game down so much afterwards with a stealth section that also serves as a two tutorial. Maybe it's just because I played so much 2033, but the first couple hours really put me off. But then the game suddenly became amazing. When I actually got into the story a bit more, interacted with the characters a bit more, and got to some actual gameplay, I was reminded of why I love this IP so dearly. The immersion is spot on again, the atmosphere is even better than before, and the gameplay is only improved. Plenty of cool interesting weapons, plenty of customization, and better sounds too when firing guns that gives a really satisfying kick. 
The characters become more and more enjoyable when you're around them more, and even Khan starts acting like his old self again after the beginning scenes. The story does have some abrupt or predictable character interactions, and it does have its flaws, but in the end, I found it to be extremely enjoyable. It tells another very cool narrative in another very cool way. I suppose if I were to nitpick, I could point out a decent number of issues the story has, but none of them are so severe that they subtract significantly from the overall narrative. But back to gameplay, because that's that's where this game really shines. The fact that you can do stuff like burn spider webs and wipe muck off your gas mask in addition to all the other immersive elements from the first game just blows my mind away. When it comes to everything the first game did right, this one goes above and beyond with improvements, with only bad differences being things like the HUD that might seem bad just because you're so used to the old one. It also inherited some of the problems the first game had, like no FOV slider, windowed mode, and other limited graphics options, but it's easy to overlook those when it comes to comparing the flaws to all the positive this game has to offer, unless you can't play it for more than 10 minutes because you don't have an FOV slider. The realism is above all others. Having to deal with everything yourself, pick up ammo, charge your flashlight, and change your gas mask hasn't lost its charm. It still has amazing realistic visuals, like blurred images when something moves quickly across your screen, again, like how your eyes actually work, and it even offers the same level of detail as 2033 with some of the amazing simple stuff, like the physics of the flame on your lighter or the chipping paint on fuse boxes. It's almost unnecessary the level of detail and realism this game has to offer. The stealth is improved immensely from the first game. There are very few instances or experiences that you have where you say to yourself, how did he know I was there? or come on, there's no way he heard that. Can't go wrong with a clear indication of light, dark, and whether you're visible or not. All that plus fixing bugs the first game had, like Psychic AI, and you have a really good stealth game. Oh, not to mention the fact that there's finally silent takedowns. I could go on for hours about everything this game has to offer if I didn't care about spoilers. It's a really fun game to discuss, and the world, characters, and themes are presented in a very interesting way. It has plenty of both positive and negative qualities that are fun to discuss, while the negatives are never too much of an issue to take you out of this immersive, fun experience. The detail, atmosphere, realism, graphics, gameplay, and combat are all great. While probably not my favorite story of the year, and while I might say 2033's was better in places, Last Light is still an incredibly good game. It does have plenty of kinks with stuff like voice acting, timed events, and other characters who've changed for the worse, but it's still an amazing game that's probably my favorite shooter of the year in terms of gameplay itself so far. If you like either a fairly good narrative, post-apocalyptic game, realistic shooter, or single player experience, chances are this is well worth your money. Then again, though, chances are you probably already bought it by the time this review's come out. If you haven't, though, I strongly urge you to check it out. It's a worthy sequel to the original. The detail is astounding. It's incredibly immersive and just overall a very awesome, awesome game.